Hey guys, welcome back. In the last episode, we um, kind of went through the ECU pinout chart and uh, went pin by pin and kind of identified some of the wires that we're going to have to uh, make some connections to. And that's what we're doing this episode. We're going to take a look at the wiring harness and all the points that we need to solder and kind of tailor to a VW swap. So let's jump in. And here's the harness laid out in the same orientation as the last few videos. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to start in the uh, upper right here. We have the main ignition relay. When we were cutting it apart, um, disassembling the harness, um, I cut this lead short. And this always happens. You cut it short because it's just a gangly ground. It's all over the place. So I cut it short, so I'm going to have to solder this guy to an existing ground. And this ground right here is just um, a systems ground, which um, you know houses the test mode connector, among other things, such as the select monitor and things like that. So we're going to ground it to this existing ground. Then we have the fuel pump uh, positive lead. So this goes from the fuel pump relay, this guy, this green connector. And I'm going to uncoil this and snake it through the grommet so that it goes into the engine bay with all the other engine bay connectors. All right, so here it is, the fuel pump wire. And it just goes right through the grommet and we have a label there. So with the relays, all we really had to do was take the ground and we're going to solder this in. I just have a masking tape flag there so I don't miss it. And run the fuel pump wire. Now let's move on to the OBD2 connector. We have this uh, red connection here. I'm just gonna snip it off. I believe that is a five volt connection, but I'm not, not sure. Anyway, I just clip it off about two inches. And then um, in the previous video, I had said that I didn't like this 12 volt battery connection on the OBD2 if you're running the um, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth gauges because when you plug this the adapter in and this is a battery connection the adapter's going to turn on whether or not you have the key turned on or not so what i typically do is i cut this connection here and i take away the battery connection and i splice this to a 12 volt switched connection and i'll show you that in just a sec so i clipped the battery positive connection and uh, we're going to splice a continuation here of this cable so it's going to get a solder joint and if we follow it around you're going to connect to this ignition on connection here and what I've done this was just a dead lead on the ignition switch wiring here and I am going to tie it into that dead lead and then I'm going to extend the ignition on out toward the engine bay as well because got it labeled there we'll put some permanent labels on at the very end this is going to uh, go into a VW bus so this actually is going to make that connection with the um, ignition switch right near the transmission right above the transmission so I did two things in this short segment I extended the ignition on wire right here and I brought the OBD2 connection into that ignition wire we'll see that uh, we've got this thick gauge battery connection. This is the one that we cut from the OBD2 connector and this is actually going to remain long and we're going to splice this um, or keep it near the computer for um, 
connecting up to the to the battery or to the starter lug on the VW bus. And uh, in the van again, this could actually just connect in the black box to the uh, battery lug in there. But uh, we're just gonna leave it kind of sitting right around here for a fuse. And I'm going to peel back the uh, Subaru taped section and cut this lead off. This is just a dead lead for battery positive. So this is what it looks like in the Subaru crimp connection. So I'm just gonna peel this back here and cut it off at the bare copper and then retape it. And there we have it. It is back to how Subaru had created it. Next up, we'll take a look at the select monitor and the test mode connector. So the test mode will just kind of wrap up toward where the other test mode connector is right here and we're just going to kind of leave it in this general vicinity so no soldering or crimping needed there with the select monitor this is the same red wire that the obd2 had so we're just going to cut it about two inches and uh, it doesn't get any special treatment it's just going to kind of remain where where it is here when we um, start forming the harness after we get all the connections kind of figured out that's when we'll start wrapping everything up toward the computer. So on all the cut wires, it's a good idea to insulate them somehow. So I just wrap a little electrician's tape around. And just working our way down the harness, we see some, some more dead ends. We're just going to do the same thing as we did with the battery connection that we clipped. We're going to peel the tape and just clip those short and then retape. So those are taken care of and now we just continue down toward the engine connectors and you'll see it kind of makes a bit of a T or a Y right here and let's zoom out. We've got our engine connectors here and our um, other engine related connectors here. We've got the um, igniter and the mass airflow sensor, pressure sensors and our start cable. So what we're gonna do is you see we have this grommet right here. We're actually going to stuff all of these wires through this grommet. Half of them are done, but we're gonna stuff all of them in. So that's, that's what we're gonna do. We need to cut the diameter slightly larger. That way we can fit these larger connectors through. But with some patience, you'll be able to get it.